Now, my next guest says that managed futures typically, typically perform well when other markets go down for extended periods of time. Well, has that time come? Let's find out more. Bob Ank manages $800 million as the president and chief executive of Equinox Fund Management. Bob, welcome to Taking Stock on Bloomberg. Thank you. It's good Explain to be here. Explain what are managed futures? Is this just all commodity stuff? Well, managed futures is a very interesting asset class. And perhaps I can put some of this in context for you. Um, over the years, institutions have embraced managed futures. And the alternatives, alternative asset class that managed futures represents is one that is uncorrelated to other classes. And it's been kind of a secret of the um, institutions. That said, managed futures have now become available to individual investors. All right, but we know about futures in terms of, let's say, the commodity markets, right? Whether it be, you know, agricultural commodities or even precious metals. Uh, is there more to managed futures than that? Yeah, exactly. So if you think of managed futures being in both uh, physical commodities, like you mentioned, as well as financial commodities. So the... Um, the, the traders that trade commodities are considered commodity trading advisors, or CTAs. And CTAs have the ability to go long or short in over 100 markets globally. You know, that said, there's a number of types of um, commodity trading advisors. And there's, there's discretionary advisors, there's uh, systematic advisors that use very sophisticated programs to take either long or short positions. All right. Now, in managed futures, is there a track record that we can point to that compares how they do versus, let's say, the equity markets? Yes. One of the reasons that institutions and now individuals have accessed managed futures is due to the fact that managed futures are typically not correlated to other asset classes, and their track records are not tied to equities or real estate or hedge funds or even long-only commodity strategies. So they're like an animal unto themselves. Yeah, they, they actually have a different return path than other asset classes. And that's really why they fit nicely in a portfolio. And what about different types of investor classes? I mean, you mentioned that this has been really the purview of the institutional investor. Is that changing? Yes, exactly. So um, for years, it's been somewhat difficult for individuals to access managed futures. There's uh, significant subscription documents or have been hold, uh, you know, longer holding periods. And that said, we've recently launched a mutual fund um, that allows individual investors access to managed futures. So we came up with a fund. Um, it's called Mutual Hedge Frontier Legends Fund. It has daily liquidity, and it's very easy for individual investors to access. Now, what about the risks involved with futures? Because as you just described, it usually involves a lot of documentation, a lot of paperwork. You don't want someone who doesn't know what futures are getting involved with them. Is it riskier than investing in other kinds of assets? Well, what you'll find is that managed futures are highly diversified on their own. You know, I mentioned earlier that they're uh, trading CTAs can go long or short in over 100 markets globally. So you have global diversification, but you also have that ability to go long or short. So the result of that is that um, uh, managed futures typically have lower drawdowns than other asset classes. and typically Drawdowns, have, that means the amount of money that you actually lose in a given period of time. Exactly. So whereas you see sometimes equities ha um, fall fairly hard, most of the times where equities fall, uh, managed futures go up. Now, in the managed futures world, are there a lot of fees associated with it? Because if you're talking about trading in and out, going long, going short, does that generate a lot of commissions? It's interesting that um, typically managed futures programs are a little bit more expensive than your traditional large cap, long only mutual funds. But that said, uh, we're very proud of the fees we've put into the mutual hedge product line and, and have the lowest fee structure in the business. What about volatility? Are you seeing increases in the volatility of managed futures, particularly now? Well, managed futures as an asset class is relatively low in terms of volatility versus others. But that said, it's very interesting to see the volatility we've seen in the market the last, you know, not just the stock market, but the currency market and so on over the last, let's say, 10 days. And typically, that's a very good situation for managed futures. When you look at the managed futures universe, is it something that is diversified within itself? In other words, one manager will just do futures of energy, someone will do futures of currencies, or do they mix and match all those different types of futures? Well, that's actually a very insightful question. There are some traders that, that focus on things like energy or metals or so on. But most of the managers that we're dealing with, most of the CTA programs, are broad-based and access many, many markets globally. 
All right, we're going to have to leave it there, but I want to thank you very much, Bob Eng, coming in, Chief Executive President of Equinox Fund Management, uh, sharing some insight into the world of managed futures.